This is Source Flux, an information stream delivered via an audiovisual broadcast. Not all computers are made of silicon. By definition, a computer is anything that processes data, performs calculations, or uses logic gates to turn inputs into outputs. And now, a small international community of scientists is working to expand the realm of computers to include cells, animals, and other living organisms. Some of their experiments are highly theoretical. Others represent the first steps toward usable biological computers. All are attempts to make life perform work now done by chips and circuit boards. For example, single-celled organism that resides in rotting trees, Fusarium polycephalum, or slime mold, is surprisingly adept at making maps. Adam Maskey, a computer scientist at the University of the West of England, and Selim Ackle, a computer scientist at Queen's University in Ontario, have spent the past few years using slime mold to map networks. In one experiment, they took a map of Canada, dropped oat flakes, slime mold food, on the nation's major cities, and placed the mold on Toronto. It used forth to form the most efficient paths to the cities, creating networks of roads that almost perfectly mimicked the actual Canadian highway system. Recently, Biocomputers got even more impressive. Swiss bioengineers announced that they had programmed human cells to do binary addition or subtraction, which is how a computer does arithmetic. They genetically engineered the cells with an elaborate circuit of genes that turn one another on or off. The cells can process two inputs added to their dish, the molecules erythromycin and fluorine, and display an answer by producing red or green fluorescent proteins. Adam Atsky says that slime molds mapping abilities could design roads, wireless networks, and information processing to circuits better than today's computers. Combining slime mold with electronics could also yield benefits. Adam Atsky is already making a computer chip that marries the speed of electrical communication with the learning capabilities of slime mold. The hybrid technology would process information less like a computer and more like a brain learning and growing through experiences and trial and error, making it possible to solve problems in both neuroscience and computer science. We envision that the Fusarium-based computing research will lead to a revolution in the bioelectronics and computer industry, he says. His colleague Akko says one advantage of biocomputers may be that they can function in places that conventional electronics can't. Think about computing in harsh environments like the bottom of the ocean, the human body, or on another planet where our computers may not survive, he says. Life forms could thrive in settings where silicon chips might melt, freeze, or disintegrate. But the biggest benefits could be in medicine, because cells are adept at interacting with other cells. Martin Fusseniger, a bioengineer at ETH Zurich and the lead researcher on the Cell Calculator project, says cells could be programmed into smart cell implants that sense health problems in the human body and administer tailored therapies. For example, a patient with a high risk of breast cancer could receive an implant that would recognize cancer indicating molecules and produce proteins to kill the cells making them. A diseased cell is a program with a bug, Ackle says. Computer scientists are good at finding bugs.